Now that we have the car in 3 Max and ready to go, the next step is to actually apply materials and start making it look like a car and more photorealistic than not. So before we do any of that, the first thing we have to do is set up a generic lighting setup. Now, you could do studio lighting with kind of like soft boxes or direct light sources like strobes or whatever. I personally like using uh, HDRIs. It gives me reflections of a natural environment. It gives me a sunlight to have the specular highlights show up. And that's what I favor using. So in the link below in the description of this video, there's a link to a salt flats HDRI that I captured about a month ago. And it, it looks like this. It's very, very simple. We have a big open field, we have some mountains, we have a blue sky, harsh direct light. Now what this does, it gives us clean reflections with a harsh shadow, so our specular highlights in the sheet metal shows up very well, and clean reflections with a nice belt line visual. So to do that, we're going to press F10, and this opens up the render settings. So you're going to go to the Scene tab, you're going to click from 3D Max Environment to Single Map, then you're going to click on the word None, and this uh, window should come up. This is your material map browser in 3D Max. This is where you could choose maps to load, and they have a bunch of different ones. So if you go to the Maps tab, and if you don't see any of these, this is because these are all custom material libraries that I've created throughout the years. You should pretty much look at Maps. Then you go to the General tab, or better yet, not General. We're going to go to Corona, and then you're going to do Corona Bitmap. And when you double click that, this window comes up. This is your generic Explorer window. So what we will do is go to the directory where you have the HDRI file. You can click on it. And I am using exactly the same file that I am uh, giving out to download. So that way, everything's apples to apples. And you're just going to press Open. This window comes up. Don't do anything. Just press OK. Now what we have to do is create a ground plane. So we're just going to create a plane, top view. And just drag and drop, go to the side view, press F4. As you can see, everything's grounded. Perfect. Now, what we're going to do is press M to open up the material editor. Now, because I use V-Ray, all my materials are set to V-Ray. But what we're going to do here is click on this. And for you, this might say standard. So when you click on the word standard or V-Ray in my case, this window again comes up. You're going to expand the material slot. You're going to expand Corona, and you do Corona Legacy Material. So this is just, you can drag and drop this material onto the ground plane. This is just going to be a generic ground plane. So the next thing we're going to do is create a sphere from the right side, Create tab, click Sphere, go to the top view, hold uh, and drag, left click, and that just creates a sphere. Now we're just going to move it up a little bit, and we're going to apply the same material to the sphere. This is just our neutral gray for the time being, just to make sure that our uh, exposure is set up properly. Now, in the bottom right view, hold Shift, press F, and this is going to give us our save frame so we can see exactly what we see. And if you see me rotating around like this, what I'm doing is I'm holding down left Alt on the keyboard and then the center mouse wheel. I just press on it. I press and hold, and then you can rotate around like this. If you don't hold Alt and you just press and hold the center mouse wheel, that's to move, and then scrolling is zooming in and out. So next thing we're going to do is click and drag this into a material slot. So click and drag on the Corona bitmap into the material slot. When this dialog box comes up, choose Instance. And now we have our HDRI in here. Now what we're going to do is change this to Dome, and that will give us this ability, this radius and camera height. The camera height, I shot it at about 5 feet off the ground, and then radius will just do 30 feet for now. So what we want to do now is in this view, or on the top right view, and before that, when you're in the bottom right, over here where it says View to Render, by default, it's it's I believe it's unchecked. But what we want to do is we want to change it to quad four perspective, and hit this lock button. So this way we're always showing in our real time preview what we see in the bottom right, which is always my hero working view. So now what we want to do is on the top right, click on the word that says front. Then we're going to go over to extended viewports, and we're going to click on Corona Interactive. Now this comes up, and all you got to do is just click into it. 
now we're going to get all all these errors that sh come up and this is normal when we have uh, generic materials set up so we'll worry about this later so i'm just going to close that out and so as you can see we have our scene we have our car we have the hdri in the background we have a sphere so now what we want to do is just change the exposure a little bit and there's two ways of doing it you could either go to the camera tab and adjust the, the exposure settings like you would on a camera in real life so you could change the iso to like 800 i'm gonna leave it at 100. what i'm going to do is go to the output tab of the material properties and change the rgb level from one to five that's not enough so i'm gonna go to 30. that's almost good 20. 15 is nice. So we have an, our gray. So if you look in the viewport, that gray and this gray, the tones are very similar. So me personally, I just eyeball things. And to me, this visually looks good. The gray feels nice. It, the shadows are nice and dark. This is good. So I am going to delete this. And so what we can do, so every time we're visually looking at this, you could either go to the scene tab and for direct visibility, just click on the checkbox and this should make it black. Or if you want, if you always want to kind of see your car grounded for just a cool visual, we're going to uncheck this. Instead of this being a, uh, a normal legacy material, we're going to change this uh, Corona Shadow Catcher material. And then we're going to take this and we're going to drag and drop it into the no map slot. Make sure it's an instance. And then see where it says projection mode. You will want to do do not alt or no, you want to do environment projection onto geometry, and then always transparent. And as you can see now, our car is sitting in the environment. And now, if we're getting this uh, little bright shadow area, just turn up shadow amount to ten, and then that should darken it. So one zero, so ten. So there's that. And this is going to allow us to have our car grounded in this environment while we data prep. It, it kind of looks cool. It's a fun visual. I personally don't ever data prep like this because I don't want to look at the blue tones and things like that to distract me. So I usually leave things at black. And then I'll just apply a normal Corona Legacy material. Apply that to that and just make it kind of a little darker shade like so there we go so this way i can just focus strictly on the car and nothing more so in a nutshell this is the generic setup of the uh, the lighting for the file before we actually start doing any data prep and then the other thing i do because i have a wide monitor I don't really data prep with the uh, the 1.5 aspect ratio. I usually just change it in the scene, in the common, the output size. I usually change it to HDTV. And then this way, I just take more full advantage of my, uh, my widescreen ratios. But this is really, you know, this is up to you how you want to work with it. It doesn't really matter. So there we go. That's your typical quick, easy setup to have a lighting for data prep.